The board's presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. Thank you, Cactus. <laughs> Record recap. Mike See, is now, a, now I'm figuring this stupid guy out it's, over it's here. dangerous. We have more, <laughs> there's more we can do with this that I don't know that we want to go that route, but we can. <laughs> Mike is a perfect 1-0 and on the season. That's it. I'm out. Good night, everybody. Thank uh, you, Hawaii. <laughs> I am one and one. I've already started the shuffling of money in and no, out. No, 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 no. At least save that for week three. Okay. The board, we begin Utah, number 14 in America, minus four and a half against Florida. This is ESPN eight o'clock kickoff on Thursday night. This is game number one that has been taken from me. And we're not going to be the podcast that says, well, you know, I was sitting around in June when the lines came out and I got Florida plus nine. <laughs> No, you didn't. You're an asshole, and your listeners don't care because guess what they don't get? That number. It's gone. So here's what I'm telling you. All summer, we we did the Pac-12 preview, and I go, hey, I don't know that Cam Rising is going to play in this game. And guess what? When you see line movement like this, including, you pointed this out, overnight while I lay in bed in a coma, overnight this line moved an additional two full points. What I'm willing to say is Cam Rising's not playing in this game. Now, well, it's an auto play to Florida. Totally disagree. You cannot look at a game at eight and a half and then accept four and a half. I would be offering you the worst of the number. Talk about the game for a minute, though, because I think you brought up something on the last episode is where I'm going to go with this game. Yeah. I don't want to do it, but I think it's a, a really sharp piece of advice from you. So, of course, the game will be 65-63 final. Yeah. But I think we need to talk about the under because Cam Rising does everything for Utah quarterback. Absolute warrior. He is the heartbeat of the team. You go from him to whatever they're putting out there. It's the equivalent of going from Anthony Richardson to Graham Mertz, which is what Florida's putting out there. We also talked about we don't know what Florida's going to do offensively. This looks like an under to me, but I'd like to say for the record, this is a grave injustice because I wanted to bet Florida. I think they've saved you from yourself because I was team Utah the whole time. Why do you think I wanted Florida so bad? <laughs> Why do you think I wanted Florida so bad? And I considered it because the, the, the line keeps moving in my favor, but there's a reason. And that's like the dead giveaway, people. Since yesterday, we taped in this room yesterday. It was six and a half. It got as low as three and a half. It's bobbed back up to four and a half. But this Value. is, I don't think anymore. There is none. There's none. So this is indicative of rising, not playing. And with that, there's no way I could take Utah. So then we start to look for ways to play this game. And the under is the obvious one. Because, yeah, it's Graham Mertz, Rice Eccles at night. I think they've won 14 consecutive games at home. Dude's going to wet himself. <laughs> if, if Utah stops the run and they got three off or three defensive linemen back and the two linebackers in the middle, it's a Whittingham defense. They're going to stop Florida's run, slow him down, force Mertz to beat him. And then Mike, he is going to wet himself. It's what he does. What's the, uh, see, the problem is it dropped below 45. So 24, 21 gets you beat. 44 and a half is what I'm seeing right now. Oh boy. Um, I'm going to play it. You know what? I'm going to join you. I'm going to join you because from the beginning, we, we knew Utah was going to bring a defense to the table. I don't love Mertz. You figure Utah is now kneecapped without their star quarterback. Yeah, all right, I'll go under 44 and a half. It's, and, and I admit this, guys, if you're out there in listener land, by no means is this some like uh, ultra-confident play. But I'm admitting to you I'm a human being with feelings. And at Thursday night at 8 o'clock, I want to sit down in my man cave and I'm going to turn on the TV and I'm going to see college football with two brand names, there ain't no way I'm not betting on it, okay? That's why I'm not a professional, because no, I'm not going to do the smart thing. In fact, I'm going to do the opposite, and I'm going to load myself into a Civil War cannon and have Jim light the match, and the fuse starts to go, and boom, I'm going to lose this game. But I'm, I, And here's even worse, I'm betting it under. I got to root against points. But could you imagine the alternative? We start this podcast and go, Hey, with the transfer portal and injuries, and we don't know anything, don't bet anything. Just keep your phone. <laughs> you, could you imagine? Rate, review, subscribe to watch. Just don't bet anything. It's fine. No, and you guys are listening for picks. I know that. Like, I, I don't, we don't call this lean theater. Like, you want picks. Respect. So we'll, we'll offer them. And yeah, we got to go on the ride with you. Okay. I think the under would be the move there. I mean, wouldn't you be stunned if that game somehow churned out like a 
30 to 21 final? I don't think Florida's getting there. So the only way it happens is if like out of mothballs, Cam Rising plays, or they've got this like dual threat freshman or young quarterback, this Nate Johnson, maybe he just takes off. That'd be okay. the only way I think the over beats us. But we're talking, I think he's the third string at this point. Yeah, and you know what I, don't, I like? I don't feel comfortable. There's a big ticket imbalance on this too. 36% of the bets make up 72% of the money on the under. Let's get in. Let's go under. The problem, <laughs> this thing opened up at 50. It's been bet down. We have lost a ton of wait for it. Come on, cacti. Uh-oh. Value. Under 44 and a Are half. We're just hanging ourselves with the first game here. Oh, the hey, under. hey, ready? Friendship. I will stay away from this if you do. Lean to the under. We, we go back on what we just said. We'll offer a ton of picks, but maybe this is not the one. The number's been f***ed on the spread, and you're f***ed on the under. And it's under 45. 24-21 would get you beat, and how sh would you feel? Because it could be a defensive game all the way. And 24-21 gets you beat. It's what your you're call. saying is right. I'm putting this on you, but it is below a key number for me. Uh, you do this what you like. We both really wanted to play this game. I do. Okay, so hold on. Let's juxtapose and go, okay, well, here's your other option at 8 o'clock. We're in Big Ten country, y'all. Sure. Nebraska, Matt Rule's debut at Minnesota. Now, I've given you my thoughts on both of these teams. Now, my team is going to play both these teams, and I'm openly telling you if Mel Tucker doesn't beat both these teams, he should be launched out of a cannon, and I'll light the fuse. Nebraska, Matt Rule. First year at Temple, debacle. First year at Baylor, debacle. I think his first year at Nebraska has a chance to be, you guessed it, a debacle. And he's going to build it his way. Minnesota, you're losing everything. Tanner Morgan, who's our executive producer, Evan Jenkins' uh, older brother, doppelganger. Tanner Morgan's gone for his 30th year. They're bringing in the Greek god of suck, whatever his name is, Sebastian Alavanthropapadopoulos. What, Evan, look up Minnesota's quarterback's real name. That sounded about right. It's, I think it's Axel Spanakopita or something. I don't know. It's, it's, it's an unbelievable last name, but anytime I've seen the kid play, he's terrible. Yeah. So, Athian Kalia Kalamanis. Yeah. Whatever. Naga, Naga, <laughs> not going to work here anymore. So look, I think automatically the way Minnesota plays, unders are usually where you roll Correct. there. They got no Mo Ibrahim, losses on the offensive line, John Michael Schmitz to the NFL, and at quarterback, I don't know what you got. Nebraska, I mean, take me through it right now. Take me through what Matt Rule's putting out there and why I should be excited about it. No, if anything, their strengths on defense. They bring back, I think, seven starters are going with this 3-3-5. Three, three, they got some beef up front. Maybe that's the thing that slows down a run-heavy Minnesota team and plays right into the under. And again, quarterbacks, let's go through this QB room. I mean, Sims is their guy. Jeff Sims, GT transfer. Now, Sims, it wasn't totally fair what happened to him. He happened to be the poor bastard who sat there at GT when they decided to go from the triple option to the spread. My point is, it's him. They got Chubba Purdy. Um, I just, to me, this game screams under. I, I, I think, and again, opened at 45 and a half, sitting at 43 and a half. Do I love, do I love this? No, but you have to make a decision. Is this Utah, Florida game really going to end up being a, I don't know, buddy. Is, is it a 24, 17 game? Is it a 24-20 game? Do we get in under the wire, 44 and a half? Or do you like Minnesota, Nebraska, Big Ten football? I think they're both going to want to run the ball. And you grab under 43 and a half. Or, wait for it, deluxe pizza, every topping, both unders. And we Parlay go out. Together? We go out. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. We just go out and tell the listeners we don't like fun. We don't like sunsets. We don't like chocolate and you're playing unders. I'm offering you the board here. So here's the thing, too. Unders are hot early in the year, running clock. The book's going to adjust, Fewer possessions. Brother. They already These have. are all bet down. I know. Even UConn NC State, which is Thursday night, that opened up at 50 and a half. That's down to 46 and a half. You want to play the under in that game? You want to go all unders? Do you really want to punish yourself? Is that no, how we're no, starting we the season with the people? Jim, I'll let you revisit 
but you got to make a decision on what you want your life to be here in week one. I think I'm going. Uh oh, Evan, he's doubting himself. Yeah, there's a lot of doubt in my voice. Uh, Evan, do this you, is do you this feel is not the a great doubt? way to start the opening week one. But hold on, maybe it is. Why? I was talking with Evan before the show. What's the mistake we made last year? We got all horned up for week one. We were nuts. We were running around. We're thinking with the wrong head. <laughs> we're betting every goddamn game. And now you're trying to dig yourself out of a hole. Be selective. Be tactical. And have a conviction. If you're not totally sure on something, don't bet it. That's the lesson, people. You don't have, there's no gun to your head. But if you're sitting down on Thursday night at eight, here are the two premium games. How do you want to play this? I think all three games that have a brand name, NC State, Nebraska, Utah, if I were to play a total, it is under, mm -hmm. certainly not an over. I'm spooked by the number and the movement in the Utah game. However, we know the reason. Yes. We're using data there. I think Nebraska, Minnesota under, and I think the under in the Utah game doable. The NC State thing is just about losing a lot on offense. They got a good defense. I don't know what UConn is, but I would probably stay away there. You want to sit down at 8 o'clock and watch one of these two games? I can't take a side. I can, Rising's not playing. You want to go under? You want to ride the lightning on it? That's what I'm going to do. Let's do it. Florida, Utah under. You want to go under in the Nebraska game too? No. Selective. They just hold you out like you want to play both. You just got done with the speech about be selective. Don't bet them all. And now you're like, why aren't you joining me? No, because I As imagine go arm in arm over the cliff. Like, not, <laughs> we're Thelma and Louise. <laughs> Come on. No, because I just, I know what's going to happen Thursday night. And I'm going to get all excited. All right. Put the under for the Utah game in there. I hate the number, but I'll, I'll do it because I'll do it because Cam Rising's not going to play. I believe he's not going to play. If he plays. I am going to unleash some text messages to you that are going to be unholy. If he plays, I'm going to pivot and bet Utah. If Just he, saying. If he plays, if he I'm plays, going to write I'm a strongly Utah. worded email to Kyle Whittingham. All right, what else we got on Thursday night? Uh, that's it for Thursday night. You want to go to Friday night? Kind of want that under in the Nebraska game, but okay. okay. Well, we'll revisit the final okay. we'll right. deal at the All end right. of the episode. All right, let's go to Friday. All right, Friday night, Louisville, Georgia Tech, and there's a lesson in this game, and it's don't be impulsive. Because yesterday you told me, Kind of like Louisville. Spread minus seven and a half I against know. Georgia Tech, but and don't then, be impulsive. Then what I told myself is the following. I am going to be an NFL man in a college world. I'm going to be an NFL man in a college world. What do I never do in the NFL? Ever. I do not lay big numbers. North of a touchdown on the road. Uh, north of a damn near field goal on the road. College, I get a little too comfortable. Now, Louisville, tons of new faces in new places. Jeff Brom, one of the biggest and most accomplished portal classes in America. They take on a Georgia Tech team who got hot towards the end of last year. Brett Key, their head coach. I just, I am going to leave this alone based on the number seven and a half. It's like you could talk me into six and a half, but it doesn't exist. I'm staying away and now in a roundabout way, you've talked yourself into the rambling wreck. Yeah, so here's the deal. They're basically the home team. It's not at their stadium, but it's in Atlanta. This is the 7.30 Friday night kick. And you mentioned with Key, they, they're actually decent last year. I know we thought their program was left for dead when they abandoned the triple option. They're a couple years removed. Four and four in conference play a year ago. They had road wins against North Carolina, Pitt, and Virginia Tech. Decent. They bring back four or five offensive linemen, three or four defensive linemen, and the majority of their secondary. So I've got Louisville with a quarterback plumber who knows the system, but none of the receivers that he's played with. So if there's any little uh, miscommunication, I got a veteran secondary takeaway, win the trenches, keep it close, flip me a touchdown and a hook as the de facto home team. Mm -hmm. I'm talking myself into Georgia Tech. I'm letting you do this. I'm letting you do this on your own volition. Notice how he didn't say he will join me. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll join you on this under because I actually agree with it. I want no part of what you've just spoken of. None. Just like you want no part of what I'm about to speak on. What's what's your deal? Michigan State minus 14 and a half. This is a sweatshirt bet. Yeah, but I'm 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 gonna put this on my board because here's here's the reality. If they don't cover 14 and a half against CMU, I'm gonna erupt. I'm gonna go nuts on Mel Tucker. Look, CMU's picked to finish fourth or fifth in their division in the MAC. And I understand 
MSU's no great shakes. But Planet Earth is on CMU. I mean, Planet Earth. Yeah, it's like 80, uh, Try 91% oh. of the money is on CMU. Do you want to be on that side? I don't. I want to be on the rat <laughs> broke ass team that's only taking 9% of the cash. I want to be nowhere near the public on this. I think the slander on MSU has gone far enough. And whether they're a five-win team, a six-win team, a seven-win team, if on your home opener after an off-season of being called pieces of shit all year, if that doesn't fuel you to come out and drop a bomb on this poverty-ass MAC program, I'm sorry. I have respect for this you. Is, I'm right here. I, I, well, that's why I didn't look at you when I said it. I felt terrible. <laughs> the point is, I don't give a if it's Noah Kim at quarterback. I don't care if it's Kate Hauser. I don't care if it's both. If you don't come out and dominate this team, uh, MSU could be headed for a three-win season. And I'm not allowing it. I'm going to do a one-time free roll. I don't like betting my own team. But I'm going to watch this game on Friday night, and I know what I am expecting. I know what I am demanding. I'm going to take MSU and lay to 14 and a half. I love the fact that Earth is on CMU. It's the only thing that scares me. Everything else points to CMU. You're right. They might play two quarterbacks. They might not have stable quarterback play, and they're going up against the Chippewa team. Strength is defense. Eight starters back. All conference players at all three levels. So if you come in there messing around with your yep. quarterbacks and dipsy do, yep. you're going to get upset. And there's a great stat on this. A MAC team has upset a Big Ten team 16 straight years going back to 06. Now, you leave out COVID because it didn't happen, but 16 straight seasons, a MAC team has upset a Big Ten team. And who better to upset than a Michigan State team that doesn't know who their quarterback is, doesn't have any playmakers at the skill positions, proven commodities. Wait a minute. Proven commodities. I will tell you one kid I'm hearing a lot about. I know you don't probably give a Go ahead, tell me. There's two. They got a guy who kind of scratched the surface last year. You know Malik Carr? Yeah. Tight end. Did you see the height and weight he reported to camp at? 6'7", 270. He's kind of like Darnell Washington now, but he's fast. He's a, he's a two-sport athlete. Yeah. I've gotten rave reviews on him in camp, and here's the other one. Now, even I'm rolling my eyes to the back of my yeah, skull yeah. on this. You know who I'm talking about, Nate Carter. Oh, boy. I know, and I'm the not— The next a, Kenneth Walker. See, I'm, see, when people do that, I stop listening to them. But I've heard he's ascended right to the top of this depth. I chart. think he'll be their number one tailback. My point is not proven playmakers. Don't know who your quarterback is. The total for your team is, what, five wins? They're a five-win team. Five and a half. Be nice. Yeah, but it's minus 180 on the under. That's yeah, a five-win flat okay, team. Okay, but if you're going to get to five and still lose, this better be one of the Well, games. but then you got to cover 14 and a half, and that's my point. Two defensive teams. My team doesn't have a great quarterback room. I'll admit that. But getting a defensive game with 14 and a half points, and here's the stat I'm covering for Jim McElwain. Oh, no. He's covered five of seven spreads against Power 5 teams. The two exceptions. His first against Wisconsin, and his second was at LSU. You know what else he's covered? What? A shark with his thighs. <laughs> if you get the reference, you get the reference. Listen, I'm breaking every rule with this. I don't even want the listeners to do this bet. I'm just telling you, the slander's gone far enough. And as I always say, for the pod, they don't cover this 14 and a half. You can just show up. Sit there for a few minutes on Monday. I will lose my shit. If you can't beat CMU by 14 points, uh, you can kindly leave. So Evan's a Spartan, too. So I, I just kindly leave the afterglow that I will have. I'll be if, in attendance for this game. So think of me if you're watching this on Friday night. Buddy, think of this pod, given what we have going with this sweatshirt bet, alma maters, kickoff. Ever, this is the goddamn Super this Bowl. This is the Super Bowl. This is the Catalina wine mixer. <laughs> Goddamn microphone fell off. Not going to leave me up on stage singing by myself. Mike's going to come in with. I'll uh, come up there and play the drums. <laughs> it's the f Catalina wine mixer. I'm betting it. Michigan State minus 14 and, and a half. And I'm betting CMU in the 14 and a half. Vitamins. Put it on your board. Put it it's on your board. board. Put it on it's your been board. It's on my board. It's a multi unit play for your information. Holy might even be a Costa lock, but you didn't bring the key, and I don't know if we're in mid season Bro, form. Bro, you can't Costa lock but, something in week one. I know. I know. <laughs> Jesus, please. Now, who's your quarterback? Is, are they playing Perriman or Bert Emanuel? Or so we have two, just for people who care about this. We got Bauer, who played a little last Bauer's year. Bauer's a runner. Yes. And, and so is Bert Emanuel Jr. Well, who's throwing the thing? 
I wish I knew. This is year five for Jim McElwain. I'm, all right, here, I'm I gonna, wish we knew who was throwing the ball. I'm going to say something I'm really going to regret, but here it is. Here we've arrived. I actually think the strength of Michigan State overall could be this D-line. This D-line is good, Jim. Right. And the inside, look, guys like Harmon, uh, guys like Barrow. Guy, they, 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 they got I like the, Barrow. They got the five-star from A&M, a Tume, a, a Adele, a Layla. I don't I can't say his f- they name. got a kid care. from AM and FSU on the D line in the portal. I agree with you. Oh, I and, they got, and right. they got this 6'7, 340 pound cinder block from Colorado. See me. Look, I think the front will be better if your plan is you're just going to run, 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 Veer. run. Oh, no. no Are no, you? No, I, don't, I don't think we're going to do I that. I actually <laughs> believed it. Uh, we're on opposite sides on the spread. Perfect. We're on opposite sides of a sweatshirt bet. This is tremendous. My only regret is we don't get to watch it together. Mm. That would be f- theater. I, you well, want a ticket? F- you. <laughs> be home relaxing after a long week, my brother. Uh, I'm Last taking game, state on that the, one. The late night. So as this game results filter out and we have to deal with the outcome, there will be one more game on Friday night for us to divert our attention to. This, and I see the tears welling uh, in your eyes. Stanford minus three and a half at Hawaii. This is CBS Sports Network 11 p.m. kick. We talked about it in the preseason. We're, and we're not going to be the podcast. I can't tell you I'm holding this Hawaii ticket from two weeks ago. We talked about it. Hawaii was plus 10 at home on the island against the Stanford team that we talked about in the preview. Encourage you to go download it, rate, review, subscribe. Stanford might not win three games this year. Hell, it might not be two. I mean, they're running full spread, shotgun, zany land. I got to be honest, I didn't think Hawaii looked bad. I thought they kind of got screwed by the refs a little bit, Jim. They could have beaten Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. Now, again, I ain't trying to turn Vanderbilt into the Pittsburgh Steelers, but if Vandy and Stanford play on a neutral field, who are you picking? You're taking Vanderbilt. Absolutely. Stanford's got to go to the island. We come in to tape today. My notes, may as well use them as a tinderbox. Lit those on fire, because then Jim sits there in his Mr. Marble's dress shirt, and he goes, hey, buddy, hey, buddy. Hey, you know what the number in that Hawaii game is? Like a f***ing parakeet. He goes, oh, my God, Stanford's laying three and a half. Do you believe it? I go, yeah, I'm dead. Thanks. <laughs> That's great. It's just super. Yeah, hey, Jim. Yeah, my grandmother died. Thanks. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, was all, I was all over Hawaii, and now I can't take it. Because I need you to be a friend here. New year, new you. I need you to not allow me to just say, f*** it, take Hawaii. They're going to win the game. Because I'm losing all. All of the value, even on Saturday night after the Vandy game hit and the lines begin to come out, it was eight and a half. I could take that number and go, all right, we're doing it. This thing is three and a half. What are we doing here? I can't bet it. No, I don't think you can. And it might be the right side, but it's the principle of it. You had it eight and a half like a week ago. You can't bet it at three and a half in good conscience. There's one more game to do. Oh, I missed one. What do we got? And I'm only doing it because you are a Mac action expert. Okay. What, what am You've I? You've heard missing? of class action lawsuits. This is a Mac action <laughs> lawsuit. Miami, Ohio. Oh, this is the Battle of Miami. And Have bl- you seen the rap video? Hold on. Have you heard the comment from some of the Miami, Ohio players? Yes. The quarterback came out and said, "We're gonna show them who the real Miami is." Ayo. Friday night, bitch. Close quote. May have done an editorial there. Miami, Ohio opened up getting 17 and a half. Isn't it's it still about 16 and a half? Okay. Is there any thought here? I don't, I hate the match. What's the total just for compa- like mid forties, maybe <sighs> let me, I've got to pull up a so you can window. Pull up, but while you do, why I ask is I think Miami defense is the strength of this team. If you're keeping it low scoring, all of a sudden having 16, nearly 17 points does present an opportunity. We've talked about Miami not being up to speed yet under Cristobal. You're not going to talk me into the play, but if you want the read on the game. Is Little Gabbard still a Miami Ohio quarterback? He's the quarterback, yeah. So if he can score a little, they play a little defense. You don't have to win the game. Total 45. That's ratty. Yeah. That is ratty. I wanted to just give you an opportunity because I slandered the Mac in the previous pick. I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk up a school. There is a Miami, Ohio. Big party school. Yeah. Beautiful campus, too, by the way. You've been there? Yeah. Oxford, Ohio. What's it like? 
I was just in and out for game day. I mean, I didn't take in like the library oh, wow. and what the a like humble bro. Hold I, didn't, on. I didn't, I didn't Hold take on. the tour. Hold on. Hold on a second. The local watering holes. The watering holes. I was just in and out for game day. I was just in and out for game day. <laughs> this sounds so bad. Um, let me ask, can I as we as we round this yeah, episode sure. out? I, I want you to be honest though. Mm-hmm. I need you to look at Evan when you say this. Yeah, what's going on? Don't lie. Do you regret going to see Emil? No. Come on. Come on. What a jerk. What an absolute 